on the week, first and ten. Stafford deep, he's got him for a touchdown! Galladay! He beat Hayward! A 31-yard touchdown pass for the lead! Jackson is in, with a block. Rivers deep and intercepted! Picked off by Slay! So, next we have, last but not least, actually, least. Um, <laughs> we do have the Lions, Dan, who I'm jumping to those free agency acquisitions. All right. Uh, the Lions, man. Free agent additions. Here we go. Uh, they got our boy Vitae. <laughs> he got some money. I'm not going to lie. He got paid. Good for him. Good for him. Yeah, good for him. Uh, don't know how it'll work out for him, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> they got Jamie Collins, uh, linebacker. He's a pro bowler, two-time Super Bowl champion, obviously with the Patriots. Uh, they got Desmond Trufant, uh, cornerback. He's a pro bowler. Uh, they got Chase Daniel. Chase best, Daniel. Best backup ever. <laughs> Legend. Uh, Nick Williams, defensive tackle. Uh, Danny Shelton, defensive tackle. Daryl Roberts, cornerback. Miles Kilbrew, safety. He's a resign. J. Ron Kears, safety. Uh, Ode Abishai, uh, tackle. He's resigned. Geronimo Allison, wide receiver from the Packers. Uh, Reggie Raglan, linebacker. Uh, Jeremy Davis, wide receiver. Tony McRae, cornerback. Uh, Elijah Lee, linebacker. And then some free agent losses. Uh, Graham Glasgow, guard, Devin Kennard, linebacker, Ashawn Robinson, defensive tackle, Ricky Wagner, uh, right tackle, which is pretty, pretty big loss for them because he's been a solid lineman for years. Uh, uh, Sam Martin, punter, uh, Logan Thomas, tight end, Jeff Driscoll, QB, uh, G, uh, JD McKissick, running back, Rashawn Melvin at cornerback, lost him. And now our draft additions, uh, we've got Jeff Okuda, which is a pretty big highlight for them. Uh, they also got DeAndre Swift, and he's a running back, second round. Uh, round three, they picked Julian Okwara, a defensive lineman. And they just got a couple guards, uh, offensive lineman, wide receiver, running back, defensive end, defensive tackle, just some holes, filling fill in some holes. Uh, so that's about it for what they did free agency and draft. Yeah, I mean, let's get into it. And, dude, the Lions have such a tough schedule, man. Yeah. Like we were talking about a bit before this podcast, like the Lions have a tough schedule. As you can see from the fact I literally have them starting out with four straight losses. <laughs> like this – they just have stretches of their schedule that are just so difficult to me. You start with the Soldier Field game. We already talked a little bit about that. Having to open your season at Soldier Field versus the Bears defense with what we've argued is really a piecemeal offense. Like, it is mostly Matt Stafford that, like, elevates that offense. Matt Patricia is a defensive coach. He's not really an offensive guy. Then you have to go to Lambeau for your second week. Again, we talked about this, like, the Packers are just going to be – that's just – that's not right. That's going to be another L. Then you go to at Cardinals, and I think Murray is one of those dudes who will really have a breakout year this year, quarterback Kyler Murray. I think with DeAndre Hopkins and Larry Fitzgerald must be like 60 now, but he's still there. So, you know, <laughs> that boy can show out at any given time. I don't care how old he is. So, like, I just really think the Cardinals will get them too – I don't think their defense can match up with all the weapons the Cardinals are starting to accumulate on offense. And even on defense, the Cardinals have improved too with Isaiah Simmons. Don't forget they picked him up. He somehow fell to them at eighth, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And then the Saints at home. We've talked about it already. Saints are a juggernaut. I just think this is four straight L's to start, man. Like, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think the only thing different was my first week because of that gut feeling that the Lions were going to win this one. Okay. But we we don't have to go back that to that again. It's just like a gut feeling, to be honest. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Packers, uh, 
that are going to be at home, like that's just an automatic win for them. So Lions taking the L against the Cardinals. Um, even if the Cardinals didn't have a defense, like the Cardinals are just going to win this one. I mean, with the addition of DeAndre Hopkins, like your offense is just so much better. Um, not to mention like Kenyon Drake breaking out last season. Uh that's just like a whole nother level to their offense. So I, I think they're going to be pretty solid this year. Um, so Lions taking the L there. Lions also losing to the Saints because the Saints are amazing. Like they're just too good. So, I mean, yeah, pretty much agree except with the first game just because of my gut. But, you know, that's pretty uh, pretty rough first stretch. I'm <laughs> not going to lie. I got you. And then next you go into the bye week and then – I think they have two back-to-back doves here up next. I think even at the Jaguars and at the Falcons, I think they can pull out wins. Because I think the Falcons are going to be one of the streaky teams this year. And I think by now they're kind of like hot start will be fizzling out a little bit for the Falcons. The Jaguars, I'm not even going to explain because we've been over that enough. But like the Falcons, I think by now their hot start like eventually will fizzle out. I think they will be sitting pretty at home. I think this is one of those games where the Lions will steal just off of Stafford being that good. And they do have a decent offense. Like, it's very, like, disorganized, I guess you could say, in terms of how it's set up. Like, they just kind of give it to guys and are like, here, you go get us a first down. You go get us a first down. Instead of actually having a scheme to get a first down or a touchdown. So, yeah, I mean, I think the, I think the Lions could pull out two straight dubs here. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll say that the Lions are taking the dub against the Jaguars. Uh, I think the Jaguars are that team that's going to be pretty close to 0-16, to be honest with you. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, the Falcons, I had the Lions taking the L, just mainly because of the the offensive weapons of the Falcons. Uh, I mean, it really is elite there with your wide receivers. Um I could see the the Lions taking this one, but I mean they really are disorganized. Like, what are you gonna do with Carryon Johnson and DeAndre Swift now? Who's gonna start? Who's gonna take what? Uh, you know what downs? Like, who's gonna? I don't even know. Like, they have no set offense, which is kind of sad for Matt Stafford because he's a pretty solid QB. Uh, so I, I, honestly, this could become a shootout. So I think that's why the Falcons have the advantage here. So I'll give the uh, the Lions an L here. I got you. And then next, I think they have to take another two straight losses in my schedule. I have them. I think the Colts will just beat up on the Lions. They're just a better team all around. The only up you could possibly tell me is that was Matt Stafford is better than Philip Rivers at age like what thirties. 7, 38, something like that. He's old. And then they have to go to the Vikings. We already talked about this game. Like, the Vikings just, again, two teams that just completely outmatch them in almost every aspect. And one of those teams is at home, too. So I just think they get two straight L's here. Yeah, same exact thing. Two straight L's. Uh, Colts are just a better team overall, no, no matter what. Um, and then the Vikings... Uh, I mean, Vikings at home, I mean, it's just going to be – the Vikings overall are a better team as well. Uh, I mean, you could argue, argue maybe the Lions offense is better, but they're just not organized. I mean, at least Mike Zimmer has a, a scheme set up for Kirk, and even if Cook isn't there, like the Vikings are going to take this one. So, I got you. And then again, we go to two straight – Dubs, I do have – this is the first team I have beating the Panthers, and I know you'll get on me for this one. I know you will. Is there at the Panthers too? The Redskins, I'm not going to explain. They're the Deadskins, basically. Yeah. But, like, the, basically, I think this will be one of those games where – we talked about Deshaun Watson's magic man ability. Like, he can just pull out games out of nowhere. I think this could be one of those games where Stafford pulls one out of nowhere. Like, I think the way the Panthers' defense is just being reformed now, I think they could get caught slipping versus Stafford because he is a vet. He knows the looks. And, like we said, the 
Lions offense is disorganized, but they have their moments when they hit. And when they hit, they hit. And I think especially with Stafford being able to throw those home runs, I just honestly think home run balls, like the deep ball, I think he could really start overwhelming the Panthers. And before you know it, things could get to the point where the Panthers are just like, let's just sit the game. I think this could honestly be a blowout. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Redskins, I, I think that's obvious W. Like, uh, I just don't see the Redskins winning that game at all. Uh, not in really any sense. Uh, there's no really standout player on the Redskins besides, like, Terry McLaurin, uh, which is a stud. But well, not Chase Young. Yeah, that's, that's very true. But that's like <laughs> that's not enough. That is not enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I I think the Lions will take that one. Their offense can definitely pull this one out. Um, Panthers. I have the Lions taking an L. Uh, you can definitely argue either way. To be honest, I like your argument. Um, I'm just thinking the the Petter, Panthers. Um, there's just no way that the Lions are going to be able to stop McCaffrey. Which is, which is kind of sad that that is the main factor for the Panthers, uh, but it really is a huge factor in in any game. Uh, I mean, McCaffrey is just carrying the team, but now they have a quarterback that can take them someplace. Uh, I mean, I, I think overall, like DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel, going to be a solid wide receiver duo for Teddy, and also McCaffrey. I mean, basically another receiver. I mean, he does everything. So I do think the Panthers uh, have a better offense than than the Lions defense. And the Lions uh, offense could be could be a close game, could be a shootout. I could I could see it either way. But the Lions are going to take the L here. I think Panthers are the better team. Yeah, I went again. What's it called? I went pretty much with gut feeling for all of these Panthers games. And I don't know what I've ended up with. That might age very poorly, but we'll see. <laughs> Next, man, this upcoming stretch is crazy for the Lions. And I will be genuinely shocked if you have them winning any of these games, these upcoming five. Like, they finish on such a difficult stretch, bro. Mm. Like, this is an awful st- – I think it's generous that I gave them one win in this next upcoming six-game stretch. Like, at – they have the Texans at home. I just think Deshaun Watson is too much. And they do have speedy receivers. Like, as much as we talk, they're trying to imitate the Chiefs offense a little bit, it seems, with, like, the whole speed thing. Their receivers are fast. And, like, aside from Jeff Okuda on the lines, like, can you name their other corner for me now that Slay's gone? Nope. So, yeah. I think definitely the Lions defense could get exposed by Deshaun Watson. And even with Bill O'Brien, I think the Texans get this win. And the Lions have to walk out with the L. Then they have to go to Soldier Field. We already talked about it. At this time of year, you don't want to be in Soldier Field. It's not a good spot. Mm -mm. And the Bears go into town on them. I just don't think they can run with the Bears' defense at this point. Then you have the Packers. Next, after that, after you've had the Texans, after you've gone to Soldier Field, then the Packers come to your hometown. And like you said, I think they'll be looking for playoff positioning at this point. And I think they're just going to go to town. I honestly think this could be a slaughter. I think this could be a genuine slaughter at this point in the year. Mm. And then you have, at ah, Titans, Derrick Henry's firing on all cylinders now. You really want your D-line to see Derrick Henry at this time of the year in Tennessee. Then you have to go to the – then the, you host the Bucks, man. Tom Brady and the Bucks are in their final form. And you really just want to get them at this point in the year, too, when they'll probably be jockeying for playoff positioning in the NFC South, too. Because, you know, you got the Saints in there. Like, they'll be fighting for their own playoff spot. They're not going to take their foot off the gas. And then I think it's a mercy that I have them getting the win against the Vikings at the end. I think it is honestly straight up mercy. Like, I just basically am saying they'll play spoiler after that many L's. I think the Vikings. From my record, I think the Vikings will be out of playoff contention, so I think they'll be probably tanking a bit. Mm. I think that's honestly how the White Lions get this last win, but, like, that six-game stretch, man, just just go. Just go. Yeah, I mean, 
it's, it's such a difficult schedule. Uh, I just couldn't imagine. Like, I don't even think – I wonder if they even think they have a chance at this point. Like, are they even worth playing, like, Matt Stafford at this point? Like, do they even waste his time? Um, but, yeah, I just have been losing out. I mean, Texans down, like, L's all over. Uh, I mean, Texans, I guess you could argue the fact that the Lions might win there. But Deshaun Watson is just like uh, the man. Like he, he, I think he'll pull out this game. Uh, he does technically have an offense on him. Uh, not necessarily anyone special, but he does have a lot of speed, which is definitely going to win them some games. Um, Bears, obviously, you know, at at Chicago, Bears defense dominant. They they're going to take another L here. The the Lions, and then against the Packers you're right they're going to be in for playoff contention right now Packers are not letting off the gas they're going to be doing all they can to win you're right probably going to be a slaughter probably going to be a blowout um against the Titans uh yeah I I took an L there uh for the Lions I don't see much of any chance of stopping Derrick Henry at this point he is pretty much final form Derrick Henry uh, he's going to be running on you for like 200 yards and two touchdowns. I mean, the guy is just insane. Um, and at this point, who knows, maybe Tannehill is going to be a much better quarterback than we think, uh, could be playing a lot better. Uh, and their defense is always solid. That t- the Titans defense, um, Buccaneers taking another L. I mean, you're right. Tom Brady almost in playoff form, uh, it's just going to be – I think this could be another blowout. This could just be terrible for the Lions. And then at the end against the Vikings, maybe a close game. But at this point, I, if I'm the Lions, especially with my schedule, that I what their record turns out to be, I'm just going to lose this game. Like, I, I want a good draft pick. I just don't want – I just don't want to win another one. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, my overall record comes out to 3-13. and 13. So they're going to be getting a, getting a good draft pick. That's a good outlook for them. <laughs> I guess. All right. So, yeah, you're overall 3-13. and 13. You see me. I got 5-11 and 11 over here. And honestly, I think I'm being generous. Like, <laughs> there's – you could definitely argue less than five wins for the Lions. 15 yards on his first three carries. Jones under pressure. Ball is loose. And it is taken into the end zone by the former giant, Devon Kennard. Third down at 15. As Stafford goes deep, looking for Hall. He's got it. Touchdown. Third down at two. Stafford to the end zone. And the catch is made by Galladay. For Lions. From the 41, on the toss, it goes back from McKissick to Stafford, and now he goes deep for Galladay, touchdown! Touchdown. Now Jones hit, ball comes loose. Second down and 20. Jones under pressure. Giants get the snap away. Jones on fourth down. It is incomplete, nearly intercepted. Coleman makes the play. Lions take over on.